I'm on another day walk today. As you can see, the Dennington Queen, the pub, is behind me. I'm in the village of Dennington in Suffolk. And the walk today is from the book again. It's walk number 13. I don't know if you can see that. It's walk number 13, uh, Framlingham from Dennington. It's six and a quarter miles, two and a half hours long. There's a shorter version, which is five miles long. Well, I'm going to do the full version because it actually takes you to Framlingham and, of course, Framlingham Castle. As you can see behind me, there's the church. Right, I'm just outside the church at Dennington. It's an impressive church. It's very, it's a big old church. Really cool tower on it as well. It's like a turret on one corner. And uh, apparently there's a, I think there's a service going on at the moment in there because I can hear sort of like the organ playing. So I won't go in and disturb them. And uh, I'll just pan you around, show you the rest of the village. Well, this is part of it anyway. The pub is, is just over there. St Mary's Church at Dennington is famed for the craftsmanship of its medieval builders displayed in a wealth of carving in both wood and stone. Remarkable are its richly decorated pews and a rare pyx above the altar, whilst other notable features include stained glass windows and the tomb of Sir William Philip, who fought alongside Henry V at the Battle of Agincourt. That's pretty cool. Um, unfortunately, as I say, I can't go in there at the moment because I think there's a service on. I don't want to disturb them, uh, which is a shame. Maybe uh, when I come back, because uh, I'm coming back to this point on the walk, the car's just the other side of the church, uh, maybe you know the service hopefully will finish by then and I'll, uh, I'll see if I can go in there then uh, before it gets dark and show you sort of all of those things. That tomb sounds really good. I want to have a look at that. So, anyways, right, pressing on, heading to Framlingham, where of course there's Framlingham Castle, and uh, I've got some important history to tell you about Framlingham Castle, um, and also related to the last walk I did, Crettingham and Brandeston, which is literally just up the road. Although many hedges around Framlingham have been lost to agriculture, enough remain to guide you on this enjoyable walk between the attractive settlements of Dennington and Framlingham. A great castle and two fine churches are amongst the highlights along the way. OK, I'm on the right footpath. So I just thought I'd take this opportunity just to tell you about uh, sort of something that happened with the last video, uh, or the last day walk, should I say. Crettingham and Brandeston. So posted it and this uh, this guy commented, I think it's called L66, I think anyway, and uh, he had some interesting information to tell me about the history of Brandeston. Now if you look back on that video you'll probably see there's a bit when I get to the village sign and I'm like why is there a bloke depicted being hung on the village sign. Well, it turns out that that person was the Reverend John Lowe's, um, an elderly gentleman, probably I think in his 80s, I think, who in 1645 was the, the vicar at the, the church in Brandeston, uh, not far away, and he was he was the vicar for like 40 years over 40 years but he was so disliked by the parishioners that they actually published a pamphlet on him uh, accusing him of being a witch of course at the time witches were it's a believable thing you know they believed in God and you know it was a very strict Puritan country at the time England and uh, yeah well Matthew Hopkins, the Witchfinder General. So, uh, yeah, Matthew Hopkins, he was uh, the self proclaimed Witchfinder General. So, he, he, was, he had no legal qualifications, but he kind of pretended that he was like this uh, country lawyer 
and uh, him and a local landowner called John Stern uh, basically were going around well they started off in like Manningtree in Essex I've been there as well on the store in Orwell and a few other walks uh, they were based there and there was uh, there was a, a local landowner there who basically uh, his wife was sick and he basically said I think this is due to witchcraft uh, there's a woman in the village an old cantankerous old woman with one leg called Elizabeth Clark who I believe to be a witch and has cast a spell on my wife so they uh yeah, basically John Stern and Matthew Hopkins decided, right, we're gonna we're gonna weed out this evil. Matthew Hopkins um, had been born into like a very strict Puritan family. His father was a vicar, and he was incredibly strict and devout. So he was immersed in a uh, in this Puritan faith. And the thing with Puritans as well is Matthew Hopkins felt that he couldn't just worship and sort of be a part of that religion, he had to show his his religious uh, faith through public acts. So something like witch hunting was kind of an appropriate thing, I guess. So uh, yeah, him himself and, and John Stern set off to find this Elizabeth Clark and basically they interrogated her, they tortured her, they, they sort of stayed just within the law basically and they'd look for sort of like what they called the devil's mark which could be sort of an age spot it could be a mole it could be anything and of course chance of finding that on sort of an elderly person is quite high and of course it's, it's complete bullshit all of this you know there's no such thing as witches and witchcraft um, but of course at the time they strongly believed in that anyway so after uh, basically torturing her and depriving her of sleep which at the time sleep deprivation was actually legal unbelievably uh, after three days and nights of sleep deprivation and interrogating and torturing her uh, she basically confessed like she wasn't a witch but she thought if I say I'm a witch and you know it'll save myself the thing she did though that doomed kind of a lot of other people innocent people was she said she was part of a coven of of other witches so basically there are other witches in Essex and sort of East Anglia the neighboring counties so Matthew Hopkins he had a hung you know in like this uh, basically they went down to Chelmsford they, they, they used to they imprisoned them in Colchester Castle I've been there as well and if they didn't die of like typhus and you know like lack of sanitary conditions it was awful um, they basically you know they would have had them convicted um, on like false evidence false claims and stuff um, Matthew Hopkins he even used to like pay off other accused women of that were, he accused of witchcraft he said like if um, basically you know if you uh, if you testify against these other women in in court and say you know that they're witches and stuff like that I'll let you go free if you don't then I'll I'll have you executed as well so it's kind of not a tough decision is it really you know either I've, you know I wrap people out or you know I'm executed so it's pretty bad and I think the woman in question I can't remember her name I think she was executed anyway um, Anyway, let's cut, cut a long story short. Anyway, I'm going on a bit here, I know. Um, so, Matthew Hopkins, he's had 20 uh, women, men and women, I think, convicted and executed for witchcraft. That all happened at Chelmsford, the Chelmsford Witch Trials. Look that up. Chelmsford's not far from where I live. So, he's feeling confident, Matthew Hopkins, and he starts sort of breaking the law. And he decides, you know what, I'm going to branch into other counties like Suffolk, Norfolk. And it's here in Suffolk that um, some of his most vile work was was carried out. So, yeah, back to Brandeston. They, uh, the parishioners hated the Reverend John Lowe's there. They published a pamphlet on him saying that he was a witch. 
and Matthew Hopkins got wind of this and him and John Stone went to Brandeston, had the, the vicar arrested. It was the first time ever in English history and probably the only time that a vicar, you know, a man of the cloth, has been arrested and accused you know, of, of witchcraft. He, and he wasn't a witch, but at the time that's what they believed. And they tortured and interrogated him for a long, long time. Um, you know, sleep deprivation. Um, they sort of made him sort of like they like dragged him up and down a room for hours and hours at a time, like basically to tire him out. As I say, he's an old man, and uh, uh, yeah, and he still would not yield. He would not say that he was a witch or, or any of this stuff. Um, which is admirable, really. Um, you could say he's kind of a martyr in a way. So anyway, Matthew Hopkins travelled to Brandeston, as I say, and he he offered to help expose and convict John Lowe's um, of this, you know, of being a supposed witch. I'm just uh, reading from my notebook at the moment. I did some research online and uh, had to write it all down. I'm not going to remember all of this. Um, so yeah, his jurisdiction only extended as far as Essex, not the county of Suffolk. As I say, he felt he was like above the law. So, due to his previous success at the Chelmsford Witch Trials four months earlier, he'd had, sorry, 15 innocent women convicted and hung for witchcraft. And of course, while all this was going on, um, the English Civil War was going on between like the Royalists and the, the uh, Roundheads, the Parliamentarians, you know, Oliver Cromwell, all that sort of stuff. So, no one that like no one was going to stop him from doing what he considered to be God's work. You know, he's a strong Puritan, as was most of England. So no one was there to sort of say, Oi, Matthew, you know, stop it. Knock it on the head, mate. <laughs> um, uh, you know, so this was the first time a clergyman had ever been accused and, and convicted of witchcraft. Um... Just flicking through my notes now. Say, so Lowe's refused to give in, and Hopkins basically had to try another more radical form of torture to gain a confession, which meant breaking the law. So, I'm going to come back to this in a little bit when I get to Framlingham Castle because an important part and the next part of the story happened there at the moat. So, I'm going to get walking because I've, I've stopped for about five nearly ten minutes in a field just talking to me phone and people are driving past like he's crazy um <laughs> so uh, so yeah i'm gonna carry on going that way and i'll chat to you in a bit so stay tuned yeah weather's holding out really nice actually um i think it's, it's starting to get light earlier and it's staying light for longer now so so that's all good uh, apart from that really there's, there's not a lot much else to say sort of until we get to Framlingham so I'm going to press on make up some ground so apologies if it seems like there's quite a long gap sort of between between sort of stuff I say it is only a six and a quarter mile walk but uh, as I said, it's, there's not really a hell of a lot to talk about in between, so I uh, thought sort I'd of let you know anyway. Um, as I say, I've got a lot of stuff to tell you about with like history and stuff, so you're going to have to put up with staring at my ugly mug for a little bit in this one. But like I say, if you uh, if you like your history like me, then you might enjoy this one. So Mo and Jill outdoors. I know you. Uh, regularly watch watch my videos um, and you particularly like sort of the walks with the history and stuff and so uh, yeah cheers for the support thank you for watching as always and uh, yeah I hope you enjoy this one should be good if it's got a castle you can't go wrong can you I love a castle so uh, yeah it's a bit muddy here right get back to you in a bit